Hmm. If only there was a magic button to get my song on a huge playlist in front of thousands of legitimate people. I'd pay for that. What's up guys, Damien Keys here, welcome back to the channel. So, more and more adverts are popping up in my Instagram feed and my Instagram story from legitimate companies telling me that they can get my music in front of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of real people and real fans in order to build an audience just for the sake of a couple of dollars. And I get it, this is human nature. This is where we the artists want to get our music in front of as many people as possible. And we wanna do this as quickly and easily and cheaply as possible. But is this the answer? Well, whilst this debate has been rumbling on for a while, you might not realize that this debate has been rumbling on slightly longer than you may think because it does actually go back to the 1950s. There was the 1960s payola scandal, which was all about radio, which started in the 1950s. Did you know in 1950, there were 250 DJs in the US, but by 1957, there were 5,000 radio DJs. As music industry, music labels popped up from everywhere, which meant recorded music took over from live music, which meant radio had this massive surge and everything started to boom. And the music industry as we know it really started to take off and everyone knew that they needed to get their music in front of people but back then the way you did that was radio and if there was a popular radio DJ and a popular radio show then if you got your music on that radio show then this meant that that was huge huge for your music and your career. And so record labels went to town. They went to work on these DJs and on these radio stations. In fact, they made any way that they could in order to get their music into that station, onto that radio DJ's playlist, which meant bribery, it meant money, it meant taking them out to lavish parties, it meant plowing them with alcohol, it meant any way necessary to make sure that their music got onto that radio station. This is nothing new. The problem back then is the same as what we have now. This was against terms of service. And why? Because back then, radio waves were owned by America, by American government, and therefore the American government prohibited these through laws so that you couldn't pay to put your music in front of people because that is an advert and radio wasn't about advertising it was about playing music that the people wanted and not duping them into music that they think that they wanted all for the sake of a backhander now fast forward to today and now it's the same thing we can now pay to get our music in front of people in multiple different ways one of those ways is paying curators to put your music on their playlist they've made a playlist they've built a following and they're saying to you if you want to be a part of this then you can but it is going to cost you money but there are several different ways of doing this because some of them are illegal and against terms of service when it comes to Spotify some of them are a bit of a gray area and they slide by whilst others are completely acceptable so the first way is you go and find a curator you have a chat with them you build a relationship with them you send them your music and you see if they like it completely legal completely fine that is not against terms of service you are saying you might like this they say I do like this it goes into their playlist everyone's a winner but then you've got the pay to play which is where you are paying the curator to be put directly into their playlist Spotify says no 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 this is against the terms of service you are not allowed to do this but that doesn't stop these people advertising all across social media flaunting their disrespect for these terms and services and saying yeah I know but what are you gonna do about it give me some money and we will make you famous but then you get the halfway house then you get submit hub or playlist push or spotify see what they did with the name there it's quite clever it's like spotify but also spotify okay i thought it was quite good 
Now with these companies, you're not paying to put your music on a playlist, you are paying for someone to listen to your music and give you some feedback on it. So therefore, it's kind of a little bit like mentorship where they say, I will tell you what I think of your music. And if I then happen to like it, I will then put that onto uh, my playlist. So therefore, if it does go on my playlist, I have not done anything wrong when it comes to terms of service. So let's talk about a few of these. Number one, let's talk about if you can buy straight onto someone's playlist, you've already got a huge problem. And let me tell you why. Because way back in the day, I was a radio DJ. And when I started as a radio DJ, I wanted to promote loads of up and coming bands, which meant loads of unsigned acts. Loads of unsigned artists would send me their demos every single day. And I really took pride in that. And over a couple of years, we built up a radio show which was all about promoting new music. And every single radio DJ that I knew and every wannabe radio DJ or aspiring DJ who wanted to go on to bigger and better things, we took it seriously. What we did was we loved the, the art, we loved the music, we loved trying to build up artists. And this idea that someone could just come along and just say, I'll give you some money, just play this, Knowing that we might not like it, that just wouldn't fly. That wouldn't be a thing. And it's the same thing when it comes to curators. It's the same thing when it comes to bloggers. You have to believe. And the reason why you have to believe isn't just for your, for your own sake, but also for your audience. Every time I release a YouTube video, I am trying to think of the best thing, the most value that I can bring to you. And every single day, I will get between five to 10 emails from people saying they will pay me money if I will mention their product on my YouTube. Now that sounds great, doesn't it? it? Sounds fantastic. But if you saw most of the crap that I get sent that I'm expected to show you guys, then that's disrespectful for you. Because whilst I'm not into sharing some back scratcher for the sake of 50 quid. It's more importantly that it's disrespectful to you, the viewer, which means that you will leave, you won't get value, you'll get pissed off, and all of a sudden, it will kill my channel. So if you see an advert saying that you can buy straight on to a blog or a vlog or a curated playlist, you need to be wary because probably what's happening is they're thinking of the money and they're not thinking of you or the art or more importantly, their listeners. And that is a huge, huge no-no because if it means they're taking the money and they're putting you onto any old playlist or they're putting you onto a playlist with fake listeners, then you've got huge problems because I get questions so often of how you change your fans also like, which is a section on your Spotify. And the answer is, it's not that easy. So if you paid for a bunch of listens and now your fans also like are a mixture of Iranian rave music and boy band karaoke, then you brought that upon yourself. Now, when it comes to something like Playlist Push or especially Submit Hub, this is slightly different because now you're building relationships. And one thing you notice with Submit Hub is you're talking to real people, you're getting feedback, and if they like you, there's more chance of them putting a second or a third or a fourth track. There's a chance that they're gonna come along for the ride and for the journey of your career. Now, this is different. This is hard work, this is hustle, this is where you are putting the, the work into your music and building relationships, and some of those relationships might be bloggers, they might be curated playlisters, they might be uh, people from labels, they might also be vloggers, they might be podcasters, but you are putting the groundwork in into people who have influence instead of just paying them money and automatically expecting them to do what you want. Now, the problem with something like Submit Hub is you might submit to 50 or 100 playlists and they might all say no, which means not only are you out of pocket, but you've got onto no playlists. And I understand that's when people are desperate and they just think, but I can just pay to get straight into a playlist. The problem is, is what comes with that 
is very, very little. You see, back in the 1950s, there was only one way. There was a gatekeeper, there was a route, which you need to get signed to a label to afford a studio, but the label needed to be able to afford to get you on radio. Nowadays, it's very, very different. There's so many ways that you can get your music in front of people that you couldn't do back then. And now, it's much, much cheaper. For example, if I wanna get in front of 100,000 people who all like a, a certain niche, I can do that for a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks to get in front of what is a Wembley stadium size crowd. That is insane. With a bit of Facebook ads knowledge, you can now get in front of people. The issue isn't about getting in front of people. And this is the bit that people need to realize. The issue is what happens when you get in front of people? The question is, what makes you interesting? What makes me stop what I'm doing to want to learn more about you? Because we are now surrounded by five to 10,000 messages and adverts every single day. So what makes you stand out? It can't just be, I wrote a good song. Good is not good enough. And there is a golden rule when it comes to all of this playlist stuff, which I think people have the wrong way around. People have this idea that if I get onto a playlist, then I will build a fan base. And it's wrong, it's not actually the truth. It's flipped, it's the other way around. If you build the fan base, you will get onto playlists. If you think of it that way around, then your career will go from strength to strength. It's the same argument for musicians when they come to me and say, hey, if you give me the work, I'll get a car. And I say, no, you get a car and I can get you the work. But without a car, it's gonna be very difficult. Same thing with this. If you build the, uh, the fans, you can get on the playlists. But without the fans, it's difficult to get onto the playlists. And if you think that just getting onto a playlist will bring in fans, you got another thing coming. Because if you think that 50,000 people are gonna hear a track, go and find you, subscribe to your Instagram when you're not playing the full game, making your Instagram interesting, doing interesting things, making more than just one song, having something that you stand for, all of these things play a part in the game. Playlists are a small part of the game, but they don't come first. They come way down the line whilst you're building momentum and people think, ah, the reason why I'll put this into my playlist is because I know it will bring people into my playlist. It'll get people to stay on my playlist, not because I'll get an extra five bucks. So I know that when it comes to seeing these adverts from companies that say they're legit, promising you that you're gonna get 500 new fans in the next couple of days, Please, I know it feels like an amazing opportunity, but if it's too good to be true or it feels too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Now is the time for us to build a fan base, an army, one by one. Now is not the time to try and take every shortcut with a couple of extra bucks, even though it feels so appealing. Now is the time to focus on the one-to-one. -one. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you can do me a favor, if you can hit that like and that subscribe button, because it makes a massive difference to this algorithm. And if you are serious about your music career and you want to work more closely with me and a bunch of other amazing like-minded musicians, then don't forget, DK Music Business Academy is in the link below. That has a chance that we can work together on a kind of more day-to-day -day basis. So stay safe, don't fall for those scammers, and I'll see you guys soon.